Here's what God's word says. Joshua chapter 1, starting with verse 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Get ready, cross the Jordan River. Lead these people into the land which I am ready to hand over to them. I'm handing over to you every place you set foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the wilderness in the south to Lebanon in the north. It will extend all the way to the great river Euphrates in the east, including all of Syria, and all the way to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to resist you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not abandon you or leave you alone. Be strong and brave. You must lead these people on the conquest of this land. I solemnly promised their ancestors I would hand over them. Make sure you are very strong and brave. Carefully obey all the law my servant Moses charged you to keep. Do not swerve from it to the right or to the left, so that you may be successful in all you do. This law scroll must not leave your lips. You must memorize it day and night so that you can carefully obey all that is written in it. Then you will prosper and be successful. I repeat, be strong and brave. Don't be afraid and don't panic. For I, the Lord your God, am with you in all you do. You may be seated. Amen. Today's sermon is Principles of Power. We're going to talk about five principles. We'll talk about two today. You know, I'm saying in the book of Joshua on purpose because there's a lot of power in this book. Last week we looked at when you get your blessing, you need to share with others and help them get their blessing. And you need to work hard for the blessing. God does that. If he promises you a blessing, he expects you to go work for the blessing. Amen? Right. Sometimes we expect God to bless us, and then we wait around waiting on God to bless us. Like, you know, we need a new job. And we wait at the house, wait for God to bless us with a job. And God wants us to go out and put an application in somewhere. Mm. Oh, Lord Jesus, that's spiritual, isn't it? Just right. apply somewhere. If you're not applying, you're going to get a job. Mm. Hello. Amen. So we got to do that. We, we, we talked about being strong and brave and different things. And in this passage, I want to look at the type of people God expects us to be. How do you know that God has promises for you? Amen. God has things he's promised for you. He has things he wants to work out in your life. How many of you believe you've actually gotten everything God wants for you in your life? I'll keep my hand down because I know I have. There's things that God still wants to do in our lives. Things He still wants us to be in our lives. Places He wants to take us. But He needs us to be people of vision. The Word says without vision the people perish. It says write the vision down and make it plain. And and when God is speaking here to Joshua, he gives Joshua a clear-cut vision of what he wants. He says, this is the vision, the promised land, the land we've been talking about for a while. He tells him where the boundaries are. And he says, every place you walk and every place you see is yours. Huh. Every place you walk and every place you see is yours. God was building this vision for Joshua this way. He wanted Joshua to possess the land. He wanted Joshua to have victory in the land. He knew that he had a destiny in that land. And that's the same thing God wants for us. He wants you to possess the land. Hello. All right. He wants you to possess that vision he has for you. He wants you to see the vision and get victory in that vision he's given you. He wants you to know you have a destiny that he's mapped out for you that's better than anything you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. See, Joshua and Caleb were the only two folks from that generation that had made it this far. God allowed a whole generation of Israelites to die before he got to this point where they're about ready to go into the promised land because they didn't have the vision to take it. Hello? When they sent the spies out, when Moses sent the spies out, all of them except Joshua and Caleb came back scared. They didn't have the vision. They didn't believe God. They didn't trust God to work the vision out in their lives. Some of y'all know sometimes we miss God's blessing because we're scared. All right. We're afraid 
that maybe God didn't mean what he said. Hmm. Maybe God was talking about somebody else. He couldn't have been talking about me. Because I just can't see myself getting blessed that way. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? <coughs> but sometimes that holds us back. Our fear of what God's going to give us. Amen. Some folks say, well, I don't want God to tell me what he wants me to do because he may want me to be a preacher. I'm guilty of that one. I raise my hand. You want me to do what, God? Preach. Okay, let me see how much sin I commit and get you to change your mind on that one. Uh -huh. but, uh, oh, guess what? I still had to do it, right? Right. But God didn't call everybody to be a preacher. He calls some people to be wealthy. Amen? He calls some people to have jobs. He calls some people to be officers in churches. He calls some people to be missionaries. God has a destiny he wants you to play out. And until you do what he's at, he wants you to do, you'll never be happy. See, God promised this land to Abraham, not Moses. So this promise was way before Moses even existed. In Genesis 13, 14, here's what God said to Abraham. After Lot had departed, see, Abraham and Lot had to choose where they wanted to live, and Lot chose to live in the plush greenery with Sodom and Gomorrah, and Abraham had the desert left. And after Lot departed, I mean, I mean, although sometimes family members have to depart before God will bless you. Huh? All right. All right. Lot, his nephew, had to depart, and then God said, good. Now, now that Lot is gone, Here's what I'm going to tell you. Look from the place where you stand to the north, south, east, and west. I will give you all the land to see to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants like the dust of the earth so that if anyone is able to count the dust of the earth, then your descendants also can be counted. Get up and walk throughout the land for I will give it to you. Huh? That means as far as your eyes can see, I'm going to give you this land. Mm. And now with Joshua, God is getting ready to fulfill the promise. So he had to remind Joshua of what he told Abraham. God wants us to do the same. He wants us to look from the place where you stand. Everybody look from the place you're standing right now. Look. Look to the north. Look to the south. Look to the east. Look to the west. Some of y'all need to go to your house and do this. All right, all right. <coughs> See, sometimes we're so busy looking now, working, and we're doing things that we can't see where God can look up. All right, all right. Sometimes that ladder we think we're climbing is actually a railroad track. Well, mm. or we're looking down so it looks hard. Oh, Lord, it's so hard. I ain't got to look up. Look up, look up, look up. Look up to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. God wants us to see his ability. That he's able to do more than you can think he can do. That's right. How many of y'all have things happen you know it had to be God because it wasn't you? Right. Huh? Doors open up. Jobs open up. Things happen. Raises happen. Stuff is going to came. We don't even know where it came from. It's because God has a destiny for you. God has something he wants to do for you. You need to see his ability to see his might, but you can't see that if you're looking down. You're getting all worried about what's going on here. Look, you're not worried about me drinking and getting drunk and doing this, partying. No, I'm worried about where you're going. I'm not worried about what happened. I'm worried about what's going to happen. See, your, your vision determines your course in life. And when you get God's vision, that takes you in the right direction. See, God wants you to see your, your life through his eyes, not your own. Because when we look at things, we don't see the possibilities. We see obstacles. We see things that could get in our way. Well, you know, God I wasn't raised in a wealthy family. You know, God... Wasn't raised the right race. I wasn't raised in the right neighborhood, in the right town, so that can hold me back. Not with God. God's the one who puts you in all those situations. Don't you think He can get you out? I'm telling you. How many of y'all are in places that you know you shouldn't be? 
Well, help. Huh? I don't know one. Come on now. Got things you shouldn't have. Say it. Right. Own property you didn't think you'd ever well, own. Thank you. Have businesses you didn't think were well. going to ever be. Mm -hmm. Have jobs you didn't think existed. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of vision God wants. And God has more for you than what you have today. Mm -hmm. You just have to see yourself through God's eyes. You have to see you belong to him, that you are his child. He loves you. He cares about you. He's got this. All right. Whatever you see through his eyes, you can possess. Because see, when you're looking through God's eyes, he's going to show you what it is you need. God wants us to have more. Why? So we can bless somebody else. If all of us are poor, how do we bless somebody? Yeah. All right. He wants to bless us. He wants to bless us with more health, more wealth, more everything. It's not just about money. It's about health is, is money too. Yeah. How much is health worth to you? Oh. But we've got to visualize what God wants. We've got to say, God, how healthy do you want me? And let me move towards that health. And i got to do whatever I need to do to get to where God wants. Because again, you have to work for it. God says, I want you healthy. And then you got to do the work. That's what happened to me. All right. I was up here weighing 240 some pounds. <laughs> Knees hurt. Thought I was getting arthritis. Mm -hmm. Thought I was getting arthritis. Wasn't feeling good. Didn't have no energy. It, it wasn't, I thought I was getting old. I wasn't getting old, brother. All I need to lose some weight. <laughs> Hello? 60 pounds later, I'm feeling, woo, I can, I can step a little bit, I can get on the floor with my wife, hey, <laughs> and chase my kids around the house, and I get all tired, I used to try to play basketball with Jeff, <laughs> you know. but I, God gave me a vision, he said, I want you healthy, and then I had to do the work to get healthy, I couldn't just say, okay, God, make me healthy, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, hmm. See, once God gives you the vision, you then have to pursue the vision. You have to see the vision through God's eyes and do what he asks you to do. Amen? You have to see God's promises as your promise. If he made a promise in the Bible, you need to grab a hold of that promise. Doesn't he make promises in the Bible? Yeah. He said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. That's what he said. He said, I'll supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. He said, I'll be there when you need me. If he said that, we've got to grasp hold of that and say, that's what God said. So I'm going to believe it. Your vision needs to be supernatural, not natural. Because when you see with your natural eyes and not God's eyes, all you see is trouble. That's why we sing that song, Trouble in My Way. You got to cry sometimes. You see the trouble. Ooh, man. And we can find trouble, ain't we? <laughs> I, things can be going good. We'll find trouble. Ooh, I know something about to happen. In fact, we say it sometimes. If you're on a mountaintop, you're going to go into a mountain. You're either going through a storm, coming out of a storm, or going into a we, Boy, we confess so much stuff. We can find trouble. But we have to understand that we have to see with God's eyes, not our eyes. There's nothing wrong with the valley. See, the valley is where we eat the food and where the water runs through and, and where we plant and harvest and get strong so we can climb up the mountain. We forget that piece. Let me take you to a scripture about supernatural eyesight. Elijah in, in 2 Kings 6.13. Listen, listen to this. The king ordered, go find out where he is. He's talking about Elisha. So I can send some men to capture him. The king was told he is in Dothan. So he sent horses and chariots there along with a good-sized army. Somebody said a good-sized army. Good -sized. They arrived during the night and surrounded the city. The prophet's attendant got up early in the morning. When he went outside, there was an army surrounding the city along with horses and chariots. So he looked out and saw they were surrounded. He said to Elisha, oh no, my master, what will we do? Isn't that what we do sometimes? Oh, Lord, what am I going to do? Look at the enemies all around me. All right, all right. Enemies, so and so talking about this, so and so treatment bad. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. God help me. Here's what Elijah said Don't be afraid, for our side outnumbers them. Now, I'm sure when he said that, the servant was like, Elijah must be smoking something. 
goes, man, I'm looking out there. I don't see nothing out there. I see me and him and that army out there. And Elijah prayed this, oh, Lord, open his eyes so he can see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he saw that the hill was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Come on, somebody. Hmm. If God be for you, who can be against you? You've got to start seeing with supernatural eyes. You've got to stop looking at what you see in the physical realm and understand that God operates in the supernatural spiritual realm. And say, God, I need to see that realm. Mm. That'll help you get through where it looks like you can't pay your bills. Come on now. And somehow you get a pay. Come on now. All right. That'll help you through when it looks like you're not gonna have gas to put in your car, but somehow the gas Come lasts on. longer. That'll help you when you get sick and you're thinking I might die and God brings you Come through. On now. When you start right. to see with supernatural eyes, All right. you start to see what God wants you to see. And God wants us to be people of vision. God also wants us to be people of prayer. Here's what God said. He said, be strong and brave. He told Joshua that three times in the passage we read. Be strong and brave. Because in spiritual war, you have to be strong. The strongest wins the battle and the war. And we have the power of God on our side. This is what Ephesians 6.10 says. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his power. Clothe yourselves with the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Huh? Yeah, you can stand against him. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world rulers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. We win through prayer. See, sometimes we want to do something. I'm just going to do something. Well, what you need to do is pray. All right. See, we, see, we want to do something because, again, we want to rely on our own power because we think we're the ones making this happen. Mm -hmm. We're not. Yeah. God is making it happen. Mm -hmm. See, when you don't pray, you're weak. There's an old saying that seven days without prayer makes one very weak. Mm -hmm. God doesn't want weak, powerless Christians. He doesn't want folks that don't have power who every time the enemy stands up they just oh, curl up in a circle. And just, no, pray. Pray your way through. God has called us to victory. He's called us to possession. He's called us to be mighty in Him. And in order to do that, we've got to get His strength and power. Prayer equals power. Somebody say that. Prayer equals power. Say it again. Prayer equals power. So if you're not praying... You don't have any power. Mm -hmm. Daniel eleven thirty two says this: By smooth words, he will turn to godlessness those who act wickedly toward the covenant. But the people who know their God will display strength and take action. How do you get to know God? Pray. What is prayer? Well, Reverend, I'm not really good at praying. You know. You know, some folk, they get up, you know, Brother Rufus gets up and prays, and he plays real good. I can't pray like that. Mm -hmm. Praying is talking That's to it. God. That's, it. That's like I'm talking to you. I'm having a conversation. God, I need your help. God, bless me. God, that, we're talking to God. That's and then when we finish talking, what do we need to do? Listen. Listen. Don't get up. Make, here, here's my wish list of what I need from God today. Get up. Pray and then listen. That's how we get our strength. That's how we get our joy. That's how we get victory is by praying our way through things. Why do you think God has blessed our church with all this health? Because we're lucky? Because we pray. We're always praying for each other and praying and praying. That's why God is keeping the devourer away because we pray, we pray. When we give, we pray. We, we pray all the time. And the more we pray, the stronger we're going to get. That's it. How many of y'all people in your family who don't know Jesus? Pray. Claim them for Jesus. Pray. God, I claim them for you right now. I'm going to keep praying until they come to God. See, here's the, here's the truth of the matter. The enemy's at war with us. 
He wants to destroy our families, our businesses, our jobs, our church, our community. He wants to destroy. But God has given us the keys to defeating him. He's given us power. Here's what Matthew 18, 18 says. This is Jesus talking. So y'all need to listen. I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven. And whatever you release on earth will have been released in heaven. Again, I tell you the truth, if two of you on earth agree about whatever you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three are assembled in my name, I am there among you. What? He didn't say we need 50 or 100. He said we're well, two or more. Two. Two or three. Yes, yes. We, we got, how many, how many folks? We, we got at least two or three in here, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have a problem getting your prayer through, what do you need? Mm -hmm. Grab two or three of your brothers and sisters. Yes. Right. Hey, let's pray on this together. Mm -hmm. Because that's how God wants it. Mm -hmm. See, the biggest trick of the enemy is for us to think we're in this thing by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We got to do it all along. Hey, you know, Lord, I, I'm just on the battlefield by myself. Mm -hmm. Is that what the song says? I'm on the battlefield by myself. Yeah, I'm on the battlefield by myself. Huh? No. In fact, when Elijah was in the cave, he said, God, I'm on this all by myself. And God said, I got 10,000 that have about their need. So you're not by yourself. You just think you are because you're in this cave. Get out of the cave. Hello? So we got to pray. See, we have the power through the Holy Spirit to stop the enemy in his tracks. We do. All right, it's jamming back there. We have the power through the Holy Spirit to unleash God's power on this earth. Satan will be driven out by our prayer. So what are we waiting for? Stand your feet. Everybody look in your folder. We have a declaration we're going to say today. Amen. We're going to say this together. It's okay. Don't miss all right. Let's say this together. Lord, give me your vision. To see who I am in Christ. To see what I can have in Christ. To see what I can do in Christ. To see your will for me. I'll say that again. Lord, give me your vision. To see who I am in Christ. To see what I can have in Christ. To see what I can do in Christ. To see your will for me. Let's do the next one. Lord, enlighten the eyes of my heart. So I can know the hope of your calling. So I can know the wealth of your inheritance for me. So I can know the greatness of your power for me. And the final one, Lord, help me pray to release your kingdom on earth, to drive the enemy out of my life, to release your power and anointing in my life, to be strong in your power and might. Holy Spirit, have your way in my life. Now, take that home and declare it every day. See, understand that what, I, what we just read is all based on the scripture. I just took the scripture and personalized it. That's how we pray powerfully. If you do something wrong and mess up, pray Psalm one. Was it Psalm one fifty one? The one that uh, Psalm fifty one, the one David wrote after he messed up with Bathsheba. I can tell you that's how you get old guys' heart. If you don't know what else to pray, pray the scripture. Read the scripture and pray it to God. God, this is what I want to have happen in my life. That's praying in the spirit. Amen. That's power in that. Declare this and God will start to give you the vision for what he wants you to have and start to make your prayer life even more powerful. This is a principle of power. Have people of vision and be people of prayer. When we grasp those things, God is going to start to move in your life and in my life in ways we can't even imagine. He's going to provide the promised land he has for us. I'm telling you, we're all not following in the Amen. promise God wants us. We're not where he wants us. All right. He's got stuff we can't even imagine. Amen. We have to trust him yes. that he's going to bless us with it. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen.